Hello and welcome to this screencast on matrices and linear systems. So in this screencast we're going to talk about what is a matrix. We're going to think about vectors as a certain kind of matrix. Look at the notion of linear combinations of vectors. And finally get around to talking about what it means to multiply a matrix to a vector. And then at the main point of all this is to represent linear systems, which we learned about in the last screencast, as matrices and vectors. So what's a matrix? Well, a matrix is just simply a rectangular grid of numbers, and that's all it is. So for example, here is a matrix. And structurally, we say we talk about the rows of a matrix, the things that go from left to right, and also the columns of a matrix, the things that go up and down, just like the columns on a building. So this particular matrix in front of you has two rows and three columns, and so we say it is a two by three matrix. Uh, this matrix here has four rows and three columns, and so we say it's four by three. This one here has three rows and three columns, and so we say it's three by three. A matrix that has the same number of rows and columns is called square. This particular matrix has ones on the diagonal that goes from the top left to the bottom right and zeros elsewhere, and so we call it a diagonal matrix. And in particular, the one, the matrix that has ones on the diagonal and zeros everywhere else is very important. That's called the identity matrix. So just about everything you can think of as a matrix, especially thinking ahead to MATLAB, vectors are matrices in particular. For example, these two guys can be thought of as a three by one uh, column vector, a three by one matrix, and the other guy can be thought of as a one by four matrix, which is a row vector. Now thinking about vectors as matrices, we can perform some arithmetic operations on them. Anything that's not a matrix or a vector that's just a single number by itself is called a scalar for us. A scalar multiple of a vector is what happens when you take a vector and multiply it times a number. And the way we do this is to multiply each entry of the vector by the number. For example, here I'm creating a scalar multiple of the vector 3, 6, negative 2, and the scalar is the number 5. And the way I perform this operation is just simply to multiply 5 to every element of the vector to get what you see here. We call this scalar because we are rescaling the entries of the vector. Now we can also perform arithmetic on vectors by adding two vectors. And if I have two vectors of the same size, uh, the same number of entries, that is, then I'm going to add their corresponding entries. That's what it means to add two vectors. For example, here I've got two vectors on the left-hand side of that equal sign. They're both 3 by 1, and to add them, I'm simply going to add the corresponding entries, as you see, 15 plus 9, 30 plus 1, and negative 10 plus 0. So now that we've talked about scalar multiples of vectors and how to add vectors, we can introduce the very important notion of a linear combination of a bunch of vectors. A linear combination of the collection of vectors is a sum of scalar multiples of those vectors. So for example, let's suppose I have these three vectors u, v, and w. Now I can form there a linear combination, namely the, uh, this, a particular one I have in mind, 2 times u minus v plus 4w. That's a linear combination of these vectors. I am creating uh, a bunch of scalar multiples of those vectors, 2, negative 1, and 4, and then adding them together. And you can see the arithmetic that takes place uh, the, 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 right after the first equal sign I'm just replacing u, v, and w with their vectors. Doing the scalar multiplication in the next line by multiplying each entry of every vector by its scalar and then adding the results. The 2, the negative 1, and the 4, the scalars that we're multiplying by, have an important role to play. We call those the weights. They're uh, the numbers that we are weighting those vectors by before we add them. So now that we've talked about linear combinations, we can talk about how to multiply a matrix times a vector. So let's get the setup correct here first of all. We're going to start with A, which is an M by N matrix. And again, that means I have M rows and N columns. And X is going to be an N by 1 column vector. Very importantly, we have the same number of entries in X as we have columns in A. And so by A times X, what we mean here is we're going to form a linear combination of the columns of A using the entries of X as the weights. Here's an example right here, and let's just walk through it step by step. On the left-hand side of the equal sign, I have the, uh, the 2 by 3 matrix, 1, 2, 1, 0, negative 1, 3. That's 2 by 3, 3 columns, and I'm multiplying that times the 3 by 1 column vector to negative 1, 3. Notice again, the same number of entries in the column vector as there are columns in the matrix. And so the way I'm going to perform this multiplication is to, moving to the right-hand side top line, I'm going to form a linear combination of the columns of A, and there you see the 1, 0, the 2, negative 1, and the 1, 3 as little 
two by one column vectors. And the weights I'm going to use to form that linear combination are the entries of the vector x. So you see the two uh, in the vector becomes a weight on the first column. The negative one that's in the second entry of that vector is a weight on the second column. And the three that's in the third entry of the vector is a weight on the third column. Everything that happens below that line there is this simple uh, vector arithmetic. I'm taking two times each entry of one zero, negative one times each entry of two negative one, and three times each entry of one three, and then adding the results. So that's what we mean by multiplying a matrix to a vector. It's a linear combination of the columns of the matrix using the entries of the vector as weights. Now, the reason this is important is because we can recast the whole notion of linear systems in a different, simpler in some ways, format, thinking of matrices and vectors. Let's go back to a linear system we saw earlier where we had these two linear equations. So this is a linear system with two equations and two unknowns. Now this is all well and good. We have two equations that are from regular old algebra. But we can actually rethink of this as a single equation that involves vectors. If we think about 3, 1, and 2, 5 as the columns that correspond to x and y, what I really have here is x as a scalar times the vector 3, 1 plus y times the column vector negative 2, 5 equaling a single vector 8, 14. And so that single equation that involves vectors and weights can again be recast as a matrix times a vector because I'm forming a linear combination of two columns using a couple of weights. And so I can reformat any linear system as a single equation that involves matrices and vectors multiplied together. The matrix you see here we call the coefficient matrix and if you look back up at the original linear system you see those are just the coefficients on the x's and y's just plucked off and put in their relative positions here. And I'm multiplying that times the vector x, y, and that equals the single vector 8, 14. That x, y is a vector that contains my unknowns. Now this is going to be a very handy way to represent linear systems, especially when we get around to using MATLAB to find solutions to that linear system. Applying this to a larger linear system, here's a system with two equations and three unknowns. And I can rewrite that as a matrix times a vector. Uh, on the left you see there the coefficient matrix, the 1, negative 1, and 1 that are the coefficients in that first equation. The 2, 3, and negative 2 that are in the coefficients on that second equation. And I'm multiplying that by the vector x1, x2, x3 that holds my unknowns. And that equals a single vector 10, 0. And we've seen before this system that uh, the x1 equals 5, x2 equals 0, x3 equals 5 is one solution. But what's nice about this is that now I can list all three of those values as a single vector, as sort of a list out of a spreadsheet. So let's recap what we've learned very briefly in this screencast. First of all, we now know that a matrix is just a rectangular grid of numbers. That we talked about scalars and how to scalar multiply vectors. We've learned how to add vectors together if they have the same length. And finally, we've learned about linear combinations of vectors, which are just sums of scalar multiples of vectors. And the important thing here is that we can think about linear combinations and matrices times vectors to rewrite or represent any linear system. Any linear system can be represented as a single equation that involves the coefficients loaded into a matrix times a vector that holds our unknowns equaling another vector. So that's all for now. Stay tuned for the next screencast where we're going to take this into MATLAB and work with it. Thanks for watching.